It's a family affair, you know it. Oh, mama loves her. Mama loves her son. She loves her daughters too. It's a family affair. All right, haters. We got to move here from our grocery outlet bargain market. From the front of it, no, from the front of Regal Cleaners that we are squatting now. It's two months, no, two years. Two years, six months, and now six, no, seven days. It says no bicycles or skateboards, but we've just had a bunch of bikers. We're having fun on those huge, those new bikes. Uh, here's Warren. Warren's coming in with, I think that's either a Mustang or a Cobra. Or is Cobra a Mustang? But it's all black. It's tinted. Yeah, it's got those front tinted windows. We don't have that in Santa Barbara. We don't like that. They made me rem remove it from my car. Yeah. Some gang related thing. They want to look inside. Yeah, now they come right up to my window. They stick their heads inside. I grab myself, right? Oh, there's that dude. Hey, that's Warren. Hey, Warren. You say what you told me yesterday. There he goes. Weirdo. Yeah, weirdo. You'll see. So that's the felon, right? He said he's his cousin. I got him uh, smoking fentanyl with me, so it really doesn't matter. I, um, I've i got the goods. They need to, you know, on either side be nice they're gonna learn they gotta be polite they have to be professional at the grocery outlet bargain market they must not be like larry who's still not coming down but they're learning right i told you in that last live stream that overheat the phone and is making it so we have to leave because just sitting with the car here idling the battery it's not powerful enough yes this 2018 has a very tiny battery it has an electrical issue an electrical problem. They didn't want to listen to me. It has messed up the computer, this electrical problem. So now it's telling the motor to do some weird things in this last trip that I took with it that, you know, ended up in flames. Well, smoke. And yeah, there were fizzling. There were issues with some rodent got in. They haven't filled in the rodent house. I saw it there, it's still there. And the parts that are have some sort of isolation from this electrical magnetic problem, right, that's in the dashboard. I'm not supposed to be putting my phone in there like I had been doing to drive for Lyft and using the Ford Sync hands-free. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a catch-22. You're supposed to use it. It was made for it to be done like this. But if you do it, it messes up all the electrics. Right, that's why I can't be recording my live streams like I used to. That's why there's a lot of nefarious things happening with the sound, especially. It might be happening now. And I don't like that, that my job is to record live streams about sound and record people who, who are doing things wrong, but only after they've been mean to me about it and that's the only time I do it, and they push the issue until they lose their jobs or whatever's gonna be happening here. And my sister's always saying, but you're spinning in your head, can you just go away from where you are, like stay away from these people so they won't make you spin, and I'm just telling them, no, it's my job. And they started it. Whoever triggers this bipolar, I'm taking it out on them, the death of Lee McMillan. And we will be doing that documentary. We will be doing her last 24 hours no 48 hours maybe the whole week we're gonna backtrack we're gonna do the since nobody's doing the opposite show that we've asked from Seinfeld we're gonna do the reverse show from Seinfeld if you don't understand the references that's gonna be just like my mama you're not gonna understand like a, a sandwich you're not gonna understand Warren Zevon like 13 years old tracking down Stravinsky in Los Angeles to ask him about how to Score. Ah, who? Werewolves of London. Did anyone ever do that? I believe that that was one of the First Amendment auditors in the world. 
You understand? If you don't care about that, then you're not going to read his book written by his wife and the last people to see him. And he said, tell him the truth. But tell him that you have to, you have to appreciate every sandwich. And I understood that. He, everyone thought he was talking about, you know, sexual sandwich. No. Sexual healing. No, he was talking about sentimental hygiene. That's what I've been searching for. Just to brush my teeth somewhere. Just to take a leak. But especially in COVID times, to wash my hands. And as you've seen, for two years, it hasn't been allowed. And you see it is going to slowly come back which is cool, I'm happy, it's about time we're celebrating in the streets by taking down our masks and not washing our hands. But what I'm saying is that I want us to look at everything everyone was doing here, just in my little world of Santa Barbara that nobody online really cares about. They don't care that we have cops with no badges or no numbers under a badge or I start to think that they're fraudulent because they're wearing someone else's shirt and they say, well, the number doesn't match with what I'm going to be telling you. And then they finally walk away after they told me that they've already spoken to a couple other First Amendment auditors in Santa Barbara. That's a lie. They would have called me. How can you be so far out of the you know, freedom of press? That person just walked away from the independent stand that is on my land, I'm saying, just like the, the Syrians over there said, I'm letting them do it because they've been there first. I'm allowing them to keep their stand, but I've been asking them in a protest, please have someone come paint it, take off the stickers, make it so it says independent instead of pendant, dependent on him. Yeah, there's a sticker. It's just the way they did it. It's excellent. But come on. It's in front of my Regal's cleaners. I'm cleaning up Santa Barbara. I'm the only First Amendment auditor in Santa Barbara since 1976. I can say that, right? I've told you about the true story of the, what is that thing called? The Liberty Bell. I know, nobody cares. But they made a big deal back then in 1976. We were having some sort of bicentennial. Yeah, can you believe it? They were making watches. It'd have Mickey Mouse watches saying bicentennial. It would always say blah, blah, blah. I think 1776. It's something they taught us in school. They never taught us about Europe. Now I know why. It's not important, nobody cares, but it should be now in the COVID times, I'm telling you, because the Mexicans wash their feet. You guys never understood washing your hands with hot water. And I met all the people who make me the food, the minions, not the cooks, not the top owners that are actually good people, and they don't know this is happening. I've met the lower minions that want to be called ambassadors, but then that'll be wrong. They're like some sort of technicians, but some of them work on the switchboards for the 411 National Service. They will say to you, if it's an emergency, sir, you must hang up and call 911. Like my Allstate, right? The guy said, I can't take this longitude and longitude you're giving to me. That is not correct. He told me those are not coordinates that anyone could find me. Do you understand this? I'm looking at a real map because the uh, navigation special 2018 Ford ST bought at Perry Ford where they won't even plug in this special computer thing. They didn't even find it. There it is. I see. It was never used. And that would have told them the whole story. There's a black box. I know. They told it to me when they sold it to me. They've just forgotten because what? It was 2018 in, uh, um, oh, it was November, it was Thanksgiving, right? So it couldn't have been Thanksgiving because they would have been closed, but it means it was the day before or after. I know it was a uh, birthday present to me, and my birthday is in the first two weeks of December. Trolls trying to match down my year so you can get to my visa card that has been drained and stopped by the shell corporation and i have a thing here that says fuel rewards and the colors are orange and blue and people still couldn't find me when i was across the street at this world gas station that is now a fuel fuel depot and they couldn't find me so nobody could find me there nobody could find me lost way far away 
And afterwards, they could not give me cocoa or just wrap me in a warm blanket, you know, hold me close, stick their fingers down my throat. Offer me a blanket. They did. They offered me this iPhone 8, a, a possibility of recharging it so I could call this Allstate again. But when I started yelling at the Allstate, explaining, you know, I've known the grandfather, you've had our life insurance back in the days when we lied to you and said we weren't smoking, so that must be the 70s and I must have been 13. Do you remember this? Oh, granddad's dead. Well, your dad should know about, you know, a house that I'm owning or maybe one of my sisters. There's some sort of insurance there or car insurance for sure. Back it up to my mama. Hello. Now we got my mama talking to my, talking to a Harlow grandson. So we've gone through three generations. Our family's outliving them and their insurance. But they're saying I'm the TV set of a motel that kicks me out afterwards. It locks me out, doesn't let me back in. They say, well, in COVID times, uh, we just do something to the lock. I forgot what it was. If you lock the door in this certain motel, it, it'll just reset it to zero, waiting for the next person to come. So now you got to wait for the next person to come if you have a problem with your card brought on by the Shell Corporation at a place called Turnpike and Cali Real, where Hollister and State merge. Right across the street is a train tracks. You gotta go over the bridge for the 101. Now, in this all-state experiment where I was way in the La Conchita slide area, way past the haunted houses that they're talking about in these magazines now that cost $12.99 at CVS's, which is, it's just someone else's picture, someone else's little article that doesn't give you any substance, except I never brought back to the ghost town of Bodhi the things that I have stolen, and it's hanging around my neck with the rest of my monkeys that were on my back. They're falling down. Now they're choking me like... Yeah, like I'm not enjoying the sandwich. And that's when I realized there are no good sandwich places in Santa Barbara since the COVID. They all died because it was only the small places that were good. Now it's all the chains coming back. There's only El Cito that's going to live as a, a family-owned restaurant. And it's, in, it's right next door to me. They are my neighbors in this place that I've been squatting that I did this experiment. I'm still doing it now because my sister says she doesn't want to take part in it. And I'm like, oh, hold on. She won the game that she said she wasn't going to play my game. She did that about six years ago. She won it by accident. Everyone's mad because she never was playing the game and everyone else was, was really trying. And now they're just part of this experiment to find out how am I going to take down this family affair. I'm not going to record very much of this because, you know, it's going to copyright infringe right away. This stuff, of course. Um, the guy waved at me again, so he knows I'm here. That's good. So we've done our job. He won't know that I'm, I'm leaving now. I'll just, he'll just think I'm here all day. So he'll know he's waving at me going like, good luck with that, bro, like he's been doing. But now I know he's starting to wonder. Who is this guy? He's gonna look it up. He's gonna see now he should come closer so I can get a better angle because he's gonna be watching it with his family, right? Whoever's gonna pick him up because your girlfriend, right? I saw last night broke up with you. I felt bad for you. I was telling everyone, oh man, what a bitch. How to do that at his job? And he was saying, oh my God, you're doing it here? And, and the girl had another bitch like, her own friend to back her up to go yeah I'm here to make sure you're not going to get violent he's like violent just give me back my mama's coat I felt that when I was like oh dude she's taking the property it's like that kink song just take the property that's all that's left right and he's crying after her and she's just driving away they're laughing and he's like give me back her jacket and no I guess not and she broke up with him. And I was like, oh, man, I was going to be all an asshole to him. And 
now I realize, you know, like I'd learned with Steve Law, there's two sides of the story. So now I want to take back everything I said and say, now I'm understanding I'm, I'm in his shoes. And so I was like, I'm not even going to bother him anymore as long as he doesn't bother me. Well, right. What did he do yesterday? He came by the car. It's in one of the live streams and he did his weirdo thing. Yeah, you guys got to stop. Now I can't just be in the parking lot somewhere. I'm not even in front of your store. You're going to come over and find me and say I'm weird. Like, I don't know it. I'm the weirdest First Amendment auditor on YouTube. I've been telling everyone that. I'm the only one who does like what this, audios. They hate audios on YouTube. That's why I can pass all my most censured stuff. I just put it on an audio. I put a black and white picture. Oh, shoot. I'm teaching all the tricks that could cost you on vidIQ, $9.99. Yeah, if you put black and white picture, you could put yourself showing off um, the Dalai Lama, the, the 14th, not the 13th who met Yao from Beastie Boys. Um, yeah, you could show his junk. He doesn't want you to call it junk. You could just say, look, his junk's here. It could be someone's thumb, like my thumb, like in the picture on the top of the newspaper of Independent. Yeah, it was here on a stand that was on my land. Yeah, everyone kept laughing, saying it didn't matter. Now, now that I did this siege, and there's going to be soon to be a viral movie happening right next door at that Lemon Tree Inn, where once again I'm going to bring up Ugly Kid Joe doing a seance to try to get the singer from Snot back into the world. You understand, he's hanging out with Rasputin, was what the latest person it said these are called voyants yeah clairvoyants i'm about to say a sooth i'm a soothsayer that's stolen from something funny happened to me on the way to the forum it's got a bitch and bass line the bass player from headless household whoa i'm talking about joe woodard's group yeah the writer he was in a group called Dudley. It was um, Ellen Dudley is the daughter of District Attorney Dudley, the one who's going to be like taking, bringing the hammer down to all of you, waving to me here. Yeah, saying weirdo, saying that it's private, it's public, taking people's privacy, it's taking rental carts, and, and you're getting two bucks a, a, and saying that I can't put my stuff in it. No, it's someone else's. Have them come that company who's renting you those things with the law telling you the warnings on it if your kid falls out of it they have nothing to do with it it was you being stupid letting you know doctors and and psychiatrists and lawyers and policemen and social workers that, that they're talking for you he just flipped me off he says i'm weird the cop doesn't have a body cam, but he has a friend who has something online called um, Let's Make the Holocaust Great Again. It turns out to be a cop along with proud, fat auditor YouTube. These guys get, you know, they have major people saying these are child molesters. This shouldn't be. It's body cam footage of policemen bringing their... 5150s, that means crazy or otherwise, just detoxing. Whatever they think is crazy. They know. They, they told me here they know what bipolar is, for sure. And since um, Santa Barbara Police Department is a chain, that means you guys all know how to deal with these people with mental illnesses. I'm very proud of you. Thank you for L.A. No, I don't think... I would hope L.A. is better. I've seen better because there's this Johnny Five-0 who got thrown in jail here, who got bloodied up, who got illegally detained and illegally trespassed and all sorts of stuff. And it's all on film and it's all uploaded. And I even added my own version. It's in black and white. So that, yeah, and I just messed with it so that the algorithm didn't pull it because I put Cypress Hill in the background. Yeah, Cypress Hill is a group. I kept referencing that to every Santa Barbara cop that I was caught in the back of their patrol car or in the jail. And they all did not know it. Or they said, ah, that shit's too old. I don't want to hear that crap. Yeah, before your time, buddies. But it's important. It's, 
that song I was singing to you was about a cop who loses it in LA. Like, good cop gone bad. He thinks he's doing good now. He thinks he's doing a Serpico and telling it like, yeah, it's like an AA meeting all gone wrong down at the precinct. But we're all covering for each other, right? Because we've been to the academy. We, we were, we're like frat brothers. All this stuff, they should be able to hear this Santa Barbara Police Department. You have gangs, you know. Yeah, just because you're going to think it's different and that you could just hide out so no trouble happens. Like the curfew times. These are facts that can be tracked down. Yeah, you might lose all my stuff. That's fine. But you're not going to lose those kind of records. And what the cops did to me inside my own four walls that are paid for all the way. I don't even owe anyone. The HOA wasn't even owed some back pay like they've done before, not told me about it, and then just doxed me. People, that means doxing in the old school way where they just call where you work and say, we're taking his pay. Yeah, they can do that. The HOA, you can live somewhere for 20 years, pay them every month, and this homeowners association that it's like paying rent now every month for something I own. And then let's talk about the taxes, right? Which I'm not getting my stimulation check back. They do not want me to have any kind of vacation. It wouldn't matter. I could only go vacationing on Saturday and Sunday. I probably could only get Shell gas stations. It wouldn't matter if they kicked me out or not. It just... Yeah. It just doesn't matter. I would need to get your gas at one point. If I'm going to fly out of here to France, I bet there's a hell of a lot of shell. Maybe not on the Air France. Who knows? Yeah, they're the ones who came out with that movie that nobody wants to see, American Interdite. And the first thing they do is show the evilness of that shell sign, that orange, mm, white, and there's some blue in their thing right now. Uh, and the McDonald's. That's got the yellow and that red, but the symbols, you put the two together, the shell and that M, they do something. What? Sadistical, masochistical. Well, no, then they show animals straight up what we're doing, what we've done since 19 before. The, the movie came out in the late 70s. It was talking about what was going on and then it was showing what it was going to be. And it is true. And I have seen it, and I saw it back in 1981. I saw it on a screen in a theater with my friends. They were giggling. They're like, when you see this, you will never go back. And I have come back. And I tried to suspend my belief, like one of the episodes in Breaking Bad, early on in the series, where it became an impossibility. It was this thing. He was going to be all violent, this guy, suddenly. And he had this kind of product on him that can easily explode. And it does at the very end, at the exact right time, when the protagonist is throwing this bag of stuff that it would have blown up just in the beginning when he's psyching himself up in the car to go, like, do this deed he has to do. The whole thing is about it. That's how it starts. And then they have to re-explain it. And that's called suspension of belief. I had to afterwards walk, watch the whole rest of the series. I know nobody cares, but some people do. They, that it just changed it. And, and that's a writer's error. And that's all. You see? Just like the writers on SNL who made the error of before he became president to put him in a sketch about 80s wedding band drummers. I have a problem with that. I believe that that was my material. Like Louis C.K. stole my material. I'm going to repeat it about me masturbating in a plastic plant while calling people and talking about the piss. I want to have. I want to have the... I want to have what she has. I want what they... I want to go there now. I want that community. I want what they're having. Mm. What is he? Oh, what is he having? 
I want that. I want, all right, what did Van Halen ask for? So I know you don't mm, rip me off, manager. Hold on. Uh, you're my agent, too. Oh, 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 plastic plant. Yeah, for the vegans. To make up for that family vacation he did, right? This Louis C.K. who was let back onto Saturday Night Live for a golden reunion. I'm going to repeat that too. And Andy Kaufman was not even, they didn't even applaud. Oh, Andy. Yeah, man on the moon. I'll tell you. Thank you, everyone. No wonder he ended up just walking around New York with hogging us. All there is in hogging us is like cream. Eggs, sorry, vegans. And what's in a, a Jerry's and Tom's, or just look at some Schmucker's jam. And the second thing, you will see that fructose. You will see weird, weird things. American interdict banned in America for us to see what's happening now. What they're doing here, just shutting me up for pointing out, you know, the little minions that can kill you. That little old lady just said, yeah, well, they're not very good. They're gonna be on their way out. And I was saying, no, they should be out already. And yeah, I'm not gonna worry about that. And I understood, yeah, she's just going home. She just needs to get in there safely. She took out, she didn't get tomatoes. She's not getting her vegetables there, right? Because the vegetables aren't ripe. They do that. They pick everything unripe. It'll never be good at any time of the cycle. That doesn't happen in France. My mama told me that she had, she didn't, she didn't remember eating anything delicious. Like when I said, you know, Bourdain's talking about the, the French are the best cooks. That's why he ended up in the end over there. I think he got killed off by his show. I think one of the key grips just, you know, stuck a camera in the wrong place. And nobody got that. I'm like, yeah, the Circle Jerks. He, he's a good friend with that Circle Jerk punk band that used to play at this place called the Dollhouse in L.A. That the owner got. This, this humanitarian, this guy who let all the musicians and creative people hang and he would give his shirt off his back and he was quite a player of instruments and punk music himself and that was his club and it was classic and three blocks down he got beaten to death by some transient that's what they're saying because they can't track it down over drugs perhaps all I know is they were in a cul-de-sac so he had no way out and it happened in front of somebody's house. One of those cul-de-sacs. One of those things that look like the neighborhood of Breaking Bad. Could you imagine him Breaking Bad? You see how when he's trying to sneak back into his house after everything happening. Not run into this neighbor. That in this world, even in my own. And in a small town like this. You could be beaten to death. And everyone's going to be sleeping. And I'm telling the story now, and most people go, ah, you, why did you bring this up at the table? Why are you telling us this true story that seems to be bothering you? Like, well, because I read it somewhere. It wasn't online, I read it in a newspaper. And then I told someone about it, a friend, and they just said they didn't care, or they didn't hear about it. They don't know that place, they don't like that kind of music. Yeah, that's why they don't like that kind of music, because it's that kind of element. It's not true. I've been in that business a long time. That it's, it's usually the opposite. No, something's happened here. And it's COVID. And everyone's thinking about themselves, saying that everyone else is selfish for not having the mask on or off or storming DC or not storming DC or censoring or not. It's that if someone says to me first thing in the morning, like that guy, like Warren saying he doesn't care. He's yelling loud and swearing. He doesn't care about this lemon tree in that's right there. 
and that I've made documented videos where you can hear Steve Law using the N-word on the, and you can hear from the other side and you can say, well, yeah, it's late night and there's no kids at the laundromat or at the grocery outlet. But some ladies might, like me, bring their kid when they're single parents, right? Do that late night thing, the kid can't sleep. So, hey, let's go shopping. Have you done that? troll who's been trolling me and saying you know what kind of father am I that would be the third time I've done this paper moon thing if you've never seen paper moon I always brought up my kids at no matter what age like that we're grifters they, my kids you can say that I'm being a bad parent you can take her away she's gonna fool you whatever county you're gonna see you're gonna call me like the schools did and say please take her back and like here, or with my beautiful one that does not not make any errors, just be like, okay, we believe you. She does have panic attacks. We will attempt to look it up since we are the teachers and staff taking care of your daughter when she comes in and freaks out on us. And we have to call you and go, really? Ah, she's in here again. Something that she's saying, she's always coming out of this one teacher's class. This teacher's pissed off at you, it appears, because you don't want to bring her to school on time. And this teacher, you know, she's just marking the flag. She's getting flagged because she's not in the room. You're saying you don't want her in the room because she got head lice from that room and you pointed out that their backpacks are leaning on each other and that they should six foot distance the thing. Yeah, no, just three or four so that they weren't touching their backpacks had always these hats on them to keep warm and then they would take the hats off right because it it's quick in the morning of Santa Barbara that it's you don't need that hat but now the hat's touching someone else's bandana that my kid liked to wear bandanas over the head it wouldn't matter if you guys were doing a play that's what I heard from my students that they did a play in an elementary school and all the kids had to go under this towel that was taking place of some other cheap thing that they could have made something. You guys could have made something, but instead you're just having them hold a towel and they're, all their heads are going under it. It doesn't matter that later people are looking for ground zero. What's the ground zero? Dude, what's the ground zero of cockroaches? It's nobody's fault except maybe the owner who's selling it. The, you know, the landlord who didn't tell you and who's now having you leave to go to some hotel to, well, they fumigate. Well, you're taking your suitcase of what you think is the cleanest clothes and not knowing that now those cockroaches are inside the suitcase. You don't see them. Maybe they're these bed bugs you don't see that's how it's done now all of a sudden somebody i have a sister she has to take care of some place in anaheim where she's giving out disneyland tickets at this hotel true story and suddenly there is bed bugs everywhere she blames it on the people who gave her the job those people didn't even know because the people who were working there before didn't mention it they they couldn't mention it right cockroaches bed bugs makes it sound like you're not doing your job yeah, you should have just gotten a maid service. Then you could have blamed it on the maid service. People don't want to do that. They don't want to do that. Uh, no, no, no. I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to turn it into this kind of bed and breakfast. Drag it into the ground. Know that it's a franchise, so who cares? Like Jeremy. No matter what happens in this viral video where he is going down. If I show up at his house, like I'm going to do the vegan the vegan Vegas vacation, I'm gonna show up at Jeremy's house for Turkey Day, and we're gonna make sure that they only eat products coming from out of the point market. Yeah, your delicious products that I did spend a lot of money on. Jeremy, you could have listened to me on the phone. You could have made all those television sets just turn off at 3 a.m. Something like that. You could have put them on a timer. You could have said, okay, I understand that you mean monitors. I understand that 
you're saying that the speakers are all broken so it means that they have been on way too loud and then if I divide no you're saying multiply each of the television sets per pump that would make like 14 or 15 blaring that it's that close to the Ramada Inn that yeah just like the lemon tree inn if I get them all to finally complain, like I'm going to get the Ramada to complain because I'm inviting some French journalists who are going to have some fun, not speak English to anyone. Pretend they don't understand. Yeah, they're going to First Amendment you because Santa Barbara, you don't know what to do with dual nationals, I noticed. You just leave us to rot and we can shout we can pee, we can get naked, we can public nudity right in front of people. It's been documented, then they said we couldn't put it online. I put it online saying, it's my daughter. They're nine hours ahead, they are. She watches it, but sometimes three days ahead though, because you know, YouTube has trouble with um, uh, people who don't pay a special premium to be in their special club. I am in this club, they still have banned me for the same reasons they would anyone else. They still don't give me another uh, number, even though now I'm even in this creator's club, supposedly. Ask Joe Kaiser. He has over 300,000 subscribers. It doesn't matter. Now I know. One of the last trolls wrote, just came into a live stream that I'd been yapping for an hour and 40 minutes to my family. They said something about, do you know that there's non-imaginary people in life and that we are watching? But They just made me feel bad. They were trying, right? But it's a joke to me. But they said, nobody cares. And then they left, thinking, yeah, that should stop him. Yeah, we'll stop him at two hours. No, that thing is 13 hours long, 33 minutes. It is proven that YouTube lied when they said you couldn't do something longer than six hours. It is proven that they lied when I just said, look, I just doubled it. But not only that, it only says 11, right? They have trimmed down something, you will see. And so it's proven now. They do do those edits. I was sitting in one place, so they can't even blame it on the dead zones and say you have to buy something that won't fix the dead zones. It shows that between YouTube and Streamlabs, this free thing, yeah, you pay. You pay by censorship. You pay by them saying they're not doing it. So lies by many chains. And you need that phone. You need that Verizon to run that Streamlabs to film the nefarious stuff happening in the grocery outlet bargain market, which is a chain. They don't care. Not the people who took my money, not these nice girls that I'm saying, these could be my daughters working here. I don't like it that Larry is not giving out his last name, but I really don't like that he's not coming downstairs after I'm yelling to some citizens. Yeah, this is just hypothetical, but look, I just took my daughter hostage. What are you going to do, Larry? He should have at least come downstairs. Well, now the lady who asked me later, some assistant manager who said she didn't even need to give me her name. That Why do I need to give you my name? Well, it's in the job thing. It says you have to give, give them your name. Right? It says tell the customer. You know, and you're going to be like, well, he wasn't the customer. He was parked across the street. But I was a customer yesterday when Larry was saying, not Larry, I'm sorry, Warren. The security chariot guard, like this guy who's doing it today, who's waving to me or flipping me off. I don't know what he's doing anymore. I don't care. I know I'm just bothering him because I'm here all the time. If it bothers him to see me, he's going to have to tell the cop that he already called twice saying, please get this guy out of here. He's, I worry about his health. He's just smoked a half ounce. Uh, right? And they came and they said, yeah, you can't move. That could be DUI. And I said, doesn't doesn't the guy want me to move? Didn't he ask you, please get him to move? And they're like, yeah, you're right. And then they had to sit and wait and watch me smoke this whole half ounce. And then they waited like three more minutes. It's all documented and the cops left. And then I left. 
So it means your DUI, whatever he was shouting at me, and I said, I know. Why do you guys treat us like kids? I'm not washing my hands. I'm not doing this DUI. You don't even know what the DUI is yet. You'd have to do all this testing, scientist. And I'm going to pass all these tests. And you don't have the test that's going to like make it so I have to go to jail or do whatever you're planning to do. But I will end up in jail. And you will just, you know, make it disappear like each time. It didn't happen. I was asking for it. But I can't get a job now because of that situation with the upstairs neighbor. And it was a lot of... I, I wanted to go to court for that stuff. Because they made me look like a badass. But when they stopped, they didn't even send me things saying, you got to come in or a failure to appear. But then that there was a warrant for my arrest. I believe there must have been something, right? That lady was so surprised. Oh, the poor rookie. She said it so softly. She's just like, there's a warrant for your arrest. I'm sorry. And she took me. And that was the video, right? And then, and then you see how long it lasts until they turn it off. So we don't get too much, do we? We just hear the cop saying, I love when things work together or something. We caught, we caught the fish, right? I was the predator. Now, I told him the story, you know, I didn't even want to drive this car. It's like my mama wants me to drive it around the block. I'm telling you, no, just leave it at some, leave it at Perry Ford and have them fix it like they're badly fixing mine. She doesn't want to do that, right? She's learning from this experience. Nah, I'm not going to give it to them. I'm going to give it to the Honda place. All right. You forgot what they did to you with your last car. I'm letting everyone who at least lets me say, all right, you're not going to learn from that one time. You don't want me to repeat it to you, so you won't do it again a third time. All right. And that's what I'm doing. And nobody cares. And that's so cool. I'm really loving that because that I can fight. I can make anyone who says they can talk for nobody. You haven't even seen nobody. Once again, if you've seen nobody, Christopher Lloyd, Christopher Lloyd, nobody. If you say you've seen it, you heard it, you know it, and you're saying you don't care, nobody cares about nobody. It's, no, Nobody Knows was the name of my band. And we used to play with Cocktails from Hell and just switch musicians and stuff because there was a lot of overdosing. You didn't know that. In the 80s, Santa Barbara was a haven for heroin. Yeah. Why do you think I left and went to Marseille, France? Do you remember the French Connection? That's where they were getting their heroin. Do you know where I spent my over a decade? I have an ex-wife there. I got a kid there. She's like in her 30s. She's a writer. Per day Lord Crichton. Yeah, nobody thought it was my real name. It is my official name. It's my dad's name. Do you know about my dad? No, I always talk about my stepdad. He's the one who made me kind of the way I am that's called environmental from the environment being with him I did become that now the bad thing was would be if I continued and end up like him where he's just you know had he didn't even die of alcohol abuse or I mean he, he abused it to the end like he was um Gensburg. And the, and the smoking, it was just what did he get emphysema but what he died of at the end I, I'm sure he wasn't breathing but my family didn't tell me that he died. And I never forgave them because they pulled it on me. Um, like happens with a lot of loved ones. They pull something like that out on you when you're going, could you just answer the question? Why did you lie about that one thing? You, now you're saying I'm a terrorist because I just say, please answer that one question. You know, like what's happening here. It's a repeat. It's a horror. It's PTSD. And they know I got it. They said I had it. But they said, do you want to go away to some quiet place? And I wanted them to understand. I'd love to, but I can't afford it. Even if I could find this perfect place. I do. I got a number from someone. They would never understand. 
Thelonious Monk? No, Thelonious Monster. Did you see the movie? Did you read the book? Do you know who I'm talking about? Do you know the time where you can obviously see him intoxicated to the point where the band just ties him up with duct tape and he's lying on the floor cursing Jesus over and over again. He's telling Jesus to F off to a huge crowd a festival going, I don't know, it was summer solstice. You see how heroin can, yeah, wants to take down that summer solstice badly. And he did. And he learned from that one experience, that experiment that he did with that band. And now he's on, like, rehab, but not in it. He's, well, in it, he's like a counselor with Dr. Drew and but learning he was just a learning counselor he would sit in the corner you wouldn't recognize him you wouldn't know that that was who he was that i was surprised i just found out i don't remember six years ago but anyways um yeah at the end of the movie there's he talks about a lot of experiences that i related to and you see him in la so you see him under bridges and things and you totally go okay i remember all that and he's, he's totally human. And he leaves his number. At the end, he says, if you have problems, you want me to help you get some help, call. And I didn't believe it. I called. It was. I left a message, I believe. Then he called back, left a message. Hey, Bob Forrest here, blah, blah, blah. And then I called him. And it was pretty good through the conversation until I started getting a little too... Uh, personal. I was telling the exact personal thing that I was going through at the time. And I started to learn very quickly from this thing that no matter who the person is, they they will think, no matter how many situations they've been in, I learned this from meetings, they will always assume that your story's not true, that you're doing the thing. And that you're trying to, in that kind of biz, instead of him giving me the, the number that I did need to call to get to the whatever place that was around Santa Barbara that I would have afforded, and it turned into more like I think, because my paranoia went straight up and he started to talk differently. Like I was trying to get on a show or something by telling this wonderful story and it wasn't that I was just I thought he'd be the only one who would understand like how I finally got to a spot where I need to do something about this because it's it's past the rock bottom I was always fine with rock bottom and it was going into this murkiness and as I tried to explain this thing that yeah you should only talk to a doctor about this um, I didn't know back then I was just surprised someone answered the phone and it was the person like that I knew Thelonious Monster that I just didn't realize he was the one who was at the the Dr. Drew and then I went whoa I knew every Dr. Drew I was like whoa it was the guy with the hat and the freckles I didn't know he had freckles right I didn't know he had those teeth right it was a whole different dude it's crazy And I thought, wow, that's awesome. So that way I was a little enthralled, like I'll do whatever this person says. But he did, he did the right thing. He gave me a number where I had to get it right and I still have it. I have to get it right the first time. If I call them and say, now I'm ready, I have to do whatever they say and just give in. And I wasn't at that point yet. I was negotiating, I could tell. I didn't know that, but that's what I was doing. Later I figured it out. And he, it was, it was a number where if I messed up the first time through the call, like if they say, yeah, yeah, we don't believe you and hang up, you call back and it doesn't say like you get a second chance. It's just no longer in service. That's awesome. You want to talk about Illuminati? That's awesome. Because then, then, then the wrong people aren't going to be wasting anyone's time. And yeah, and I wasn't ready. So that's why I got that number, but I'm not going to blow it and call now and say, I think I'm ready now. And then then misunderstanding something and going, well, here, try this other number. And they give it to me. And then I realize it's, oh, they're, 
they're being fraudulent to me. They assume that I'm being fraudulent to them. They're covering their backs so I don't go find them. Yeah. I don't waste anyone else's time in the mix. Yeah, because it's a big thing, isn't it? And I don't mean that sarcastic. I mean, I, I learned. Just like um, I learned, I took a, a, a song down that we did that even I thought it was being playful about religion. My friend Tony, the Syrian, who owns that stop and shop by where I live behind the county services where there's doctors there that I use perhaps to get friends uh, Viagra yeah yeah. I think I can get away with saying that because you know UCSB and all those laundromats and other coffee houses where we used to meet these wonderful people who should be in their dorms studying but you can study bombed at UCSB and you can study blitzed and you can study I'm saying children try it baked yeah don't get blitzed don't get bombed you get tastefully baked with whatever you need to get you through your your thinking hours or to get you through the stress or whatever you feel you just want to get back balanced you want to become that kid who, who woke up every morning excited about something that they were kind of excited about the night before. Maybe it would, something that's going to come in the mail in two weeks and you're still psyched about it. And you're thinking about what you're going to do with the thing. And you're already setting something up. Like, like relationships. Like if you want that new person. If you're like me and you have said, you're never going to get anyone else. That's it. And I... I You've put all these rules, and that's actually awesome because you're going to find the perfect quirky person who's just going to follow and think all your quirky insaneness that everyone else thinks is awful, they're going to think that's cool. Like in that story, I told you that ex-wife where supposedly we, we left and they were all saying I was being an asshole to her. Meanwhile, we, we, make, we make up in the French way, in the streets, not caring. All the way, dude, that's where Per Day Crichton was made. I'm telling you that on acid, yeah. Sorry, Per Day, that's why you are. Part of the WTF experiment is happening here. Shh, don't talk about it. Oh, here he comes out. There he is, let's wave to him back now. I'm waving to you, Bo. I like your hair. I'm thinking of doing that, pulling it back like that and tying it back. I wonder if you wear it out like me when you're not working, when you're not an ambassador to the grocery outlet with your shirt saying, let us let us work together, right? You didn't want to work with me. That other lady higher up didn't want to give me your name, so she didn't want to work with me. She did read the thing about the First Amendment, so she did walk away and know she was wrong. I did see a tear in her eye, or at least I told everyone that, to make it more embarrassing. I'm gonna say there was a tear in his eye too when he said, good luck with that. Yeah, you were, you were crying that you said that to me, didn't you, sir? Mr. Chariot, man. They're not called chariots, they're called shopping carts. Yeah, but they're not yours. They're not grocery outlets, they're not the soapy suds. They are the companies, whoever rents those to you, and they're gonna be upset that you didn't call them about fixing the sign that's broken there that says, be nice to our carts. They're not gonna like how you threw one of my carts. It was mine. It was from Costco. What did you guys do with it? You see? You can't do it. There, he's coming out. You, did you notice that it didn't fit like the others? How'd you get rid of it? Yeah, he just stuck it in the back there in that alleyway right down there. That's what they do. Now he can just like float down into the creek bed. Yes, the creek's right over here. I pointed it out. It's behind our wonderful Regal Cleaners, which we're going to turn into an art school and the Music and Arts Conservatory. I'm gonna allow that family because they are, they started that with Jeff L. Evans. They opened that school and it's still running even though COVID unfriendly times. We are now, I don't know where they'll be going, if they'll have a place. You can always come to my place, Bodnar's. Just cause I'm a Crichton now doesn't mean that I will forget 
any of the Bodnar experiences. And since you've been through my WTF experiment, right, and you have listened to the tapes and everything, and it's all okay now, you know, yeah, his way was okay. All right, but this, what I'm doing, I'm having to charge the phone uh, to talk to you right now through this. And it's because the um, Ford, right, uh, the battery thing isn't working right. I have to keep it running. It's getting now, not 10 miles to the gallon, but just idling, it's getting 8 miles to the gallon. It says zero, I think, two miles to get home. It doesn't matter. It, um, we're going to have to go put another... I can only put five because we have to keep five for food. And then people that... That will be our... No, please. And you didn't put it in French. I, I didn't mind her cutting in before that thing when she spoke in French. It was all set for French. The car, people, I know nobody cares. Oh, we'll get something in El Cito. That's what we're going to do. All right. Everything's fine again. So we're going to go put some gas so that we can idle some more and, and bother those people. We would be at home, but it's too noisy with them walking. Even though I know now they're really trying to be quiet. So that's, that's cool. But if they, put the, if they put the floors back to code, they... Um, they can, they can totally make my life nice again. And I'll forgive them for the six years stuck on my mind. Six years. What a surprise. Six years. My mind hurts a lot. Six years. Oh, man. Is that all I got? Santiago number two, it says, at 11.26, ITV. And what is this? It's a Honda car, but a cool one. Is that a Supra? Is a Supra a Nissan US1B? Oh, it just disconnected from the phone. Cool. Now you can hear me, yeah? Those are better mics, right? There's a dude coming with the Red Bulls. Oh, I remember when I used to drink those Red Bulls. I can't do that dude anymore. He's got a Davis shirt on. What is he? What? It says Bulls or Chargers. He's, he's not for the Lakers. Sorry, dudes. Sorry, Kiedis. Your Lakers, you adore them. Yes, you do. Where are they right now? COVID style. I'm sorry. I don't like sports anymore. No, I used to love it. Just we can't gamble anymore. Oh, there's my sister's letter. My sister did write a letter. I feel really bad. I was yelling at my mom yesterday and then telling, yeah, at least you wrote me a letter. It doesn't matter that I ripped it up and I, in front of you, dissected and showed you how mean you were being and you finally understood and now everything's good. It doesn't matter. This Nina didn't do it, and actually it was me not listening to myself. I didn't look into the... I was doing that thing. I was doing my destiny. I wasn't looking in the mailbox. It may have been here. Oh, my God, it says the 26th of May. Yikes, she sent it the 26th of May. We've only been arguing since June and stuff. Uh Uh-oh, this might change everything. All right, so that's something. I didn't open it last night because I didn't want to change. It was her birthday. And I just wrote back good things that I remember when we were young. I was saying, it's not enough. I'm not giving you enough for her birthday. But I realized, whoa, I never even, I wasn't good at the cards. I think if I did get her a card, yeah, I could never find her a card because it always has that thing, sister this, or you're the greatest daughter, blah, blah. And I would always just write something for Christmas, cards and things. It's awkward, and I would just write one line, like, have the best, blah, 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 whatever, have a nice day. Have a nice life. You know, like what Gila Pap told me. Gila Pap, the unknown violinist from uh, Santa Barbara. You got to see the movie. He's in a, um, just like Louis C.K., he's in a uh, uh, convertible that is not his, that's rented with, like, a friend, like, in the days I did... Miami Vice, we would make fun of Miami Vice. He would play Crockett, 
he would make his face all black. We would take a cork, right? And, and those days, like doing the hobo thing, but, and he'd be Crockett sitting next to me in this Toyota <laughs> Tercel. Yeah, it was hilarious. And we'd drive down the coastline of Santa Barbara with those same trees, like the Florida thing, but going, doo -doo 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 you know, doing that drum machine sound of the day where every man on the radio had that drum intro or that was the doo -doo 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 in the background like she's got legs doo -doo 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 -doo. you know zz top there you go um anyways i should read nina wouldn't care about what i'm talking about right now nina is my wonderful sister she uh she protected me as a when i was young and she understood me and i think i just wrote i i will never forget us holding hands in this uh, bunk bed in Cali Rosales. It's a place up the street. There was a sheriff who lived down the street. He would sick this Rottweiler on me sometimes. It depends what mood he was in when he would see me coming down the street with this Schwinn bicycle that I've been trying to explain to these Syrians what a five-speed Schwinn with the banana seat is. And they were saying it doesn't matter. They didn't care. And I felt it was like, wow, there's a lot of stories with, you know, I was like a paper boy. We had to hang the papers over those handlebars. They were like chopper handlebars. They were really cool. Like, hey, oh, don't you want to know? And they said, get out. You've already spent enough time, right? Did you? I think the last time when the whole incident happened, I was getting aspirin. It all has to do with if it's if I'm giving get, getting medicine and you've seen me get it over and over and over again. Oh, we have more money than we thought, people. Oh, thank you. There is a god. All right, we're going to put $5. It should be okay with $5. That's going to be 1 gallon. And you should get more than 10 miles to the gallon, but we're going to allow that because uh, they didn't fix the electric like I asked them. And the uh, computer's not telling the motor, this new one, what to do. So it's not going to be as good as the old one that had 9,000 miles on it. Can you believe it, people? They said it was brand new. But it did have 9,000 miles. And 9,000 miles, they said, driven by some old ladies. Yeah, a shift. This ST, you know how fast it is? Yeah, wherever they came from, they drove it fast. Hi, buddy. How you doing? Thank you. $5. Thank you. $5 on the uh, five. There you go. Five for five. Thank you. There we go. Easy speezy. Jeremy, I will get my gas here all the time. You know that. I'm going to go use the bathroom later. It's the cleanest one in town. World Express, people. 2837. If you don't want to be hassled, you don't even have to get gas. You can use that bathroom. Now it's gonna be him cleaning it, just, you gotta give it that. If, they're, if it's a little messy, like if he didn't have a chance to get a couple things, you can tell him and he's gonna be like, all right, I'll go in there. Now here at the, uh, at the show where they just didn't wanna do anything, right? And they wanted to wait till the next, the night person to clean, so they would just stick a, uh, stick something on the door right it started to piss me off that says do not derange do not disturb right that it's broken and i did this whole thing where i filmed for a week i keep going really it's still broken and they were like yeah they would be smiling and smirking smirking and twerking until that last time where i just got tired i'm like give me the key you gotta let us use the bathroom i know i know you guys aren't cleaning it they didn't want to know. They just said, we are allowing you to use the bathroom. All right, the Ford thing just went on. I have to explain because you can't see it. So Ford people, when I open the doors, it shouldn't do what it's doing. It's like the ST little thing is, is flashing on. It was what I got. I told the guy when he was yelling at me that you guys are going to close. It, it, you've waited like five minutes. It was like five minutes after five. The guy just wants to go. We got lives. And I'm like, dude, I just got here, but you've had my car for months. And and you're not even doing anything about it. And, and can I just take my things? I mean, it, they meant a lot to me. It was like the poster, the Kurt Cobain poster. They didn't care. I don't care. I'm like, look at this. It's signed. 
He's in a German studio flipping everyone off, saying, you see, we can smoke in studios. It was done back in the blues days. It makes the stuff sound fine. If stuff gets messed up, it's going to be like, you need so much smoke. And, and by then, it, it became vintage. But I've never had, I've been in the most smoked out, the most, um, oh man, when it's just humid. Like everything that they said will mess something up. It, it never really happened. I mean, by the time something messes up, you were on to another table. Another mixing table, another, you know, everything. Tubes finally, you know, you got to replace them. But if you make it like, nah, tubes weren't good because they start crackling or whatever, we can't buy tubes anymore. Now we're going to make it also, it has to be like a boutique. Well, yeah. Now you perk my interest. All right. How about a hybrid studio? All analog, old stuff. And then new stuff, these boutique things. I had a friend, he would make, oh man, these preamps, tubes, inside these old um, 70s uh, lunch boxes. And you can find them at, um, you know, sometimes they're really expensive. It depends on the thrift store. But if you get lucky, right, you can find these classic, uh, it'll be like Smokey and the Bandit and... Uh, you know, Spider-Man or... It, it was all those classics. I had, you know, mine was Daffy Duck. I was insane into Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. Uh, Whitey Coyote, too. Yeah, any of the genius characters. Um, who's the crazy one? The, ah, Tasmanian Devil. I definitely knew that there was a part in me, especially when I did the right combination of uh, drugs and alcohol. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm thinking about a certain drug that made me super wacky and I'm clearing out my nose. You understand? But I did a lot of drugs up my nose. So you'd have to start guessing drugs like they've been doing um, in my videos. All right. We have put the $5. I have done more confessional talking. I'm turning it on. It says 2.35, which means it's an hour off now. It's slowly fixing itself, the clock. Maybe that's what this is all about. Touch to return to voice record. I don't even know if you're on. Wow, an hour and seven. Let's push to that. Now it's showing me in waveforms. Ooh, it's just going up and down the wave. I don't know. And now it's the view meter. That I like. We are pinned up to the zero. Exactly, except the red light saying that we're talking too loud. It's, that's not good. But you know it, it. It's going analog mode, so it is taking it like a good analog. It'll let it go into the red. It'll be what you call is forgiving. That's right, forgiving. Analog is very forgiving in the sound qualities, like in a telephone too. If you get one of those old telephones, if you have the chance to still have a landline. Just plug in that telephone, get a cheap one, go to CVS. They still got those $10 ones. Or go to a thrift store. I got mine. It has, uh, it reminded me of Disneyland back in the days when my sister played on the Mickey Mouse Club. And they were, they invited like prodigies. I was not considered one back then. I was too young to be a prodigy. And then I was too old to be considered a very good prodigy. Yeah. So that doesn't matter. I'm going to park this way now so that we're looking into the Regal Cleaners. We have returned, but we are leaving the tags outside for the world to see. So the cops coming around this time can bust us for the tags. So I'm asking for it. And there, it, it can only go two ways. Either they're, they're going to get pissed off. Well, they won't if I get pissed off. Either I be super nice and I start saying, well, no, I mean, I have, I do have uh, my license. Yeah, I got a couple in here. Can I show you? See how skinny I was here? I keep in, wait a minute. You, you're seeing different names. Well, yeah, you've got all those, but you lost them the last time I was at the jail, which was three, four weeks ago. Now it's turned into a month month and a week I believe yeah it's a month and a week my sister sent this before our 
Ooh, everything's... Where did I put the letter? I'm going to read it, Nina, afterwards. I hope... I hope it doesn't make me feel really bad about everything I said on June 1st. Everything I said. Oh, my God. It's from the 26th. So, did they hold on to it? Why did it... Oh, because I didn't look into my mailbox. See, it's not their fault. It's not my fault. Yeah, we're like past your birthday, so it means the 7th. So, you do the math, Nina. From May 26th to June 7th, I did not read this letter, but I've only been doing my communications, my communiques of, like, resistance. Since when? Since the beginning of June. Ouch. This is going to be fun. Yeah. I'm going to find out how, how bad am I, or did I, like, I'm putting it to my head. Like, I know I don't see a check, so I'm hoping to God there isn't a check. It would be really helpful, that check right now, and I could go to the Syrians and they would cash it and my banks would not. That's awesome. But I would feel so guilty. Oh my God, I think I see part of a check. Yeah, I would... No, that could be part of the letter. Yeah, I would feel guilty because I would know, oh my God, like, had I opened it, you know I would have just written a little like, wow, thank you, this money always comes at a time when I need it. I had zero, which was true. But instead, I am I went to like, you better not send me any money. That's where I was at. I ain't going to accept your money. I'm going to burn your money. You know what? Actually, maybe I'll pull the money out and then just give it away. Now, that would be good. But I'd film it, right? Giving it to what you would think was the wrong People, the wrong people, Nina. I voted twice to make sure that the wrong people did not make it back into the wrong places. Talking to the wrong people. Yeah, talking about their accents. Making fun of their accents. That's like someone making fun of Daffy Duck's speech impediment. Who would do that? Well, like an officer by the name of Elmer Fudd? Yeah, you see how life is messed up. I'm going to read the letter. That I, I can't do it alone, Nina. I know you're telling me, but I have to do it here. Don't worry, nobody listens to these things. So we are Monday, June 7th. Verizon is saying that I'm getting all my bars. It is 2.40 on the clock of the Ford. It is 04, 25, 2018. According to the computer of this Ford, it says fuel level low, 28 miles to empty. That's better than the right zero, it said a little while ago. Now it says key battery low, replace soon. That's once again triggering me about, oh God, there is a check. It's triggering me about that, that Ford took our money. Now it's saying washer fluid level low. Nina, that's triggering me. Oh my God, it's 300 bucks. Thank you so much, Nina, Nina. I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. Oh my God. Na, 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 na. I'm reading it. Nina, forget about everything I was complaining. I'm just saying, all this complaining is they stole that money from you and Mama and Kent and whoever else did the thing and, and the Lyft drivers. No, the Lyft passengers who love me. They didn't want this to turn into a different car. They were appreciating the things that they used to say about it, and now none of those things are valid. That's all I'm saying. Now there's like the the analog thing. This is for my 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 daughter, if you get this. The analog meter of the empty or full, it's showing that it's at a quarter tank. It's a known thing, a quarter tank, even at 10 miles to the gallon. It's going to be more than what they were writing for. All right, don't question me on this. I, I, I'm, I'm losing, losing my train of thought. I'm just saying that the, the analog um, needle, it's like a needle pointing toward, toward these gauges. I know these analog things. That's what we're talking about. It, I can trust it more than this digital thing saying, where did it say that? How many miles? 28 miles. No, I know I can make 50 miles with a quarter tank. So I know all these things because I've already driven and I know those dials. 
those dials are still working. The analog dials, I'm talking about the digital that was working. It used to tell me the exact when it was going to go out. When, when the car was first new, uh, when it said zero miles, it stopped running. And they would say, don't do that. That's bad for the filter. I know that's a whole different story. It's just, isn't that awesome? It wasn't lying. When it says four miles, like, yeah, I, I, I know now that I better get somewhere within four miles. It started to mess up slowly. And, and you know, the computer started to mess up. And it happened when I drove into this Bodhi, it got very cold. There was a rodent who got in and ate something. It's still there. These, the things that need to be covered because of this um, magnetical problem that everyone's bored of. But I'm telling you, think of uh, Christopher Lloyd, who's a cellist. He has taken some cello lessons, right, Chris? Had a cello of mine. A, a student had to go search him down, say, he's okay with you owing him for a couple lessons just give him the cello back right they took the cello they were nice about it right um they took it though and somewhere disappeared before going to salt lake city i'm not understanding salt lake city is where i set up a racing thing that came with this car oh i didn't tell you that my family i went to this racing thing in uh for ford it's the ST racing. I forgot what the thing is. It's in Salt Lake City. They let us drive Fiestas, Ford Fiestas around into the ground. They teach us how to, we could do that to these cars, supposedly. I've never tried it. Maybe those drivers who drove this car just 9,000 miles. Maybe the old ladies, right? They had their training in this race caring experience. That was very cool. I did enjoy that. That was a cool part, Ford, of giving that along with the car. That was awesome, plus this sync system when it used to work. But let's get back, it's all about the computer. The sync isn't working because this computer now has me on a timer that says, we've been driving for 99 hours. But I've, I've cleared it, right? I've pushed the clear. I've done all the things that they're gonna tell me. Did you try this? Did you try this? No, it finally says, in the information, read the manual in the glove box. And I always ask the Ford people, did you do that? And they said, no. Oh, here we go, system check. Three messages active. Oh shoot, we should, um, we should film this. Let's see what the messages are, because then it erases them. All right, I'm gonna turn you off and uh, go back to live streaming. Yeah, we're at 63%. It is charging again. Yeah, we just have to be driving around. We can't be idling. Um, the battery, I guess, is too small to be dealing with charging even a phone. So these are things. This is a 2018 Ford Focus ST that I bought at Perry Ford. It, they had it for six months since uh, last Thanksgiving, 2020. Of course, I was trying from another Thanksgiving. I bought it either day before Thanksgiving or day after, somewhere in that zone. The first week they got their entire amount, cash, like 26 grand. It was $100 short. They made a big deal about it. After it, this being in their possession with nothing that can be covered by the warranty, they still sent me computer things, COVID style, that said, would you like more warranty? You should buy more warranty. And I already told them when I first bought it two years ago, people should care. Do not have someone's hand. Something smells really good though. It smells like toast. Something's burning in the car from idling. That's awesome. And I wasn't smoking, people. I'm trying not to smoke today. What could it be? There's no bakery. And the Alcido's too far away. It must be the Alcido with the wind. All right, we're going to go get a $3 taco, though. Ha ha. It comes with chips. It comes with hot peppers that were marinated. And, uh, yeah. It's, uh, there isn't any meat, Nina. You should be happy. It's just bell peppers and onions. And, um, I don't know. I don't want to ask it would take away from the 
the trip. Now, let's do the, yeah, let's go to the messages. I'm going to do those messages and we're going to go film us going to get that food that just smells divine, people. If you're ever getting all mad, you're spinning. You know you still have to take care of some of these nefarious villains. Or they're going to be like, oh, so I'm going to be the villain. You're going to be done. Another sister that I'm the bitch now. And I was telling you that she's going to say that I was being the bitch. And I will just say, no, I'm not even going to say that any of you were a bitch. I never did that. Can you take advantage that I'm still the same in that respects since a kid? I can keep your secrets. I don't. The only people who could tell me about my mama is me. I tell that to my best friends, even when they have my best intentions. Now, my sisters, I allow them to speak because they see them when I'm not there. And they speak a truth that my sisters can't see, my mama wouldn't understand. And these kind of friends, I usually don't mix them. I can't mix these colors. But sometimes, for the most good intentions, these um, Bodnars will show up at things that aren't really of their liking, but they want to. Here he comes, that dude. He he got a mustache, and no, he looks better. He trimmed his mustache. So his car, he's the dude, dude. So you know that I doxed you. Your license plate is A P Q Y six seven three. So we're gonna say A Penguin Queen. Queer, I'm sorry, eight penguin queer. That's cool to be queer. You should be happy I'm doing that. YMCA, why? So eight, pedophile. You see how I can change it? It's still going to be your license plate. Eight PQY673. It says California. It says February. You do have 2021. That's good. It's an Accord. It's a Honda like mine. Like, maybe that's why you didn't like me. Now you're not recognizing me with my car parked the other way. Funny, man. What are you doing in there? Are you rolling a joint like me? We'll see. Peace. So there's a bottle in your door on the passenger side. You are on the passenger side. You are wearing some hip, like, uh, pre-dyed jeans. I don't know what those shoes are. They're probably, like, what they make you wear at the grocery outlet. So you just say you were wearing your attire. So you had that shirt. We're gonna see if it has the thing on the back. Sometimes you don't. I do like your 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 facial hair. You did clean it up. So good luck with yeah. Maybe Larry's talking to you guys, right? Good luck with it being like you're gonna get away with just sitting there. What are you doing in there during your break? Are you? Did they tell you that you can sit in your car and you can't stand out front? Hello. See people, you should care. It did work. The lady who's next to him, who are, who's his, his, his colleague, he's got his door just crushed against hers. And it's her fault. We made her re-park, right? She was just going to park, taking up two spots. Well, th- not taking up two spots, just what these SUVs are doing, and I got very mad. Like Ashley Brilliant getting mad at these um, leaf blowers. Oh, geez. That's the sound of a sob that needs work. Yeah, I had that one. Oh, yeah, listen to that. Oh, man, those are a lot of work. But they're cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's like... All right, so he's... I'm curious what he's doing. Let's... I, I gotta go to... I gotta... I got, we gotta film. All right, so bye, people. We'll see you in the next live stream.